Winter weather is about to make a big time return to the US into next week. This comes as a shift will move in with a strong winter storm set to bring rain and snow. This video will break down all of the big changes on the way ahead. Thank you for joining me in this video, which is the first one I've worked on in about three weeks. After some busy times in the early part of December, and then spending time with friends and family leading up to and going into Christmas, here I am, ready to upload videos again. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the overview of the jet stream, the flow of winds in the atmosphere, and how that is going to dictate changes that occur at the surface in the U.S. as we go through the next few days. We're especially going to track the shift in the jet stream set to occur as we go out of Saturday and then into the Sunday time frame this weekend. Starting with Saturday, of course, one thing you'll note with the jet stream flow as we go through Saturday at 1, 2, 3, and as this graphic is showing at 4 o'clock p.m., that's the fact that it is going to be pushing northward over a lot of the U.S. and it really forming this upside down U-shape that I just hashed out. With an upside down U-shape like this, it is an example of a classic ridge in the jet stream or a northbound push in the winds over much of the U.S. and North America. With the jet stream in this fashion, this is what is responsible for warmer than average temperatures 99.9% .9 of the time, and that is exactly why there is going to be well above normal temperatures continuing. We've seen them before Christmas, they're going to continue after Christmas, at least through Saturday over some parts of the central and eastern U.S., but take note of the changes that you can see moving out of the northwest and other western zones as we go out of Saturday into Sunday. By Sunday afternoon, there will still be a ridge ongoing with a backwards U-shape and likely warmer than average temperatures with that setup in the east. But pushing up against that, can you see the normal U-shape or trough that's going to be diving down? This is a dip in the jet stream coming in from the northwestern and the central U.S. as early as the end of the weekend. With that trough or dip in the jet stream pushing up against where the jet stream will be ridging, that's where we're going to get this stronger energy moving through, and that is going to help in triggering a storm system. Behind that system, as the trough moves in, that's where cooler than average temperatures and winter-like conditions will resume in the pattern after being absent for a couple of weeks. Well below normal temperatures will be surging down out of Canada and on a beeline path right down over parts of the eastern U.S. Before I go in depth on the temperature shifts, let's talk about the storm system that will cross the U.S. to usher in changes. We can do just that by playing out this blended future radar guidance that I have on screen. Let's start the timeline as we go into the Saturday, December 27th time frame. One thing you'll note is that with the jet stream already diving down like it will be into the far western U.S. on Saturday, there will be some moisture getting pulled in and feeding low pressure as it moves through the mountain west and eventually to the eastern side of the Rockies. Moisture moving through parts of Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado in the colder pocket means that there will be some snow in those zones and it could accumulate to some decent totals, especially up in the higher elevations and ski resorts Saturday into Saturday night and early Sunday. Eventually, the low-pressure system riding the jet stream will begin to move east from around 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Sunday. That is when this low-pressure system is set to strengthen and begin pulling up more moisture from the Gulf region. That means an increased chance of rainfall moving up into the Midwest and lower Great Lakes in the warm pocket, and an increased chance of snowfall in the cooler pocket. That will likely be expanding through parts of the North Central Plains through the day on Sunday, where there could be some briefly moderate to heavy snowfall rates even in parts of Nebraska and South Dakota before the moisture moves east. Eventually, as we go into Sunday evening, that's when the system is really going to begin to pick up. And this is the best way of taking a look at it. With low pressure likely sitting around the lower Great Lakes vicinity, especially around Lake Michigan at Sunday evening, there's going to be the warm front to the east of the low pressure system like warm fronts always do. This will set up a warmer air pocket that's going to include the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the lower Great Lakes. That is why those zones will be dealing with rain and even temperatures as high as in the 50s and 60s with that rain Sunday evening. Right here, moving into the Mississippi Valley by Sunday evening, that's your cold front. So behind that front, that's where the really cool air is going to be. And in the wintertime, that's often where you get the transition from rain to snow. In this case, that's exactly what's going to happen. There will be a good bit of some snowfall, some of it heavy at times, moving into the upper Midwest and even as far south as the regular Midwest region. That includes parts of Iowa, northern Missouri, and eventually into Illinois, where you could crash over to snow Sunday evening heading into the early part of Monday. You can see that crash that the GFS guidance is expecting. By the time we go overnight, Sunday night into Monday morning, 
This system is indeed expected to feed around enough cool air for there to be a transition to snow coming out of parts of Illinois, possibly down into Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. Will it accumulate to much? Probably not, but it will be at least a pleasant surprise for snow lovers to kick off the new week on December 29th. Further down to the south, there will just be some cooler rain into some parts of Tennessee around that time, some warmer rain as you go down, especially towards parts of Louisiana, Mississippi and Alabama. Rain will continue towards the east coast in scattered fashion. There could even be some rumbles of thunder and some gusty winds with that activity along the front into Monday afternoon and evening. The heaviest precipitation with this system will be in the northeastern quadrant of the U.S. by the time we go towards Monday at 4, 5, and 6 o'clock especially into the Great Lakes region and then the interior northeast. That's where precipitation will continue with this system even through Monday night and into Tuesday, of course, especially induced with that lake effect zones coming off Lake Michigan and then the eastern lakes as well will continue with some snowfall all the way through at least Wednesday morning. With that being said, let's take a look at the rain and snow totals expected with this system and then recap its impacts on the way. Starting with a look at the 48-hour precipitation that is expected to fall, especially in the window from Sunday morning through a Tuesday morning. One thing you'll note is that especially coming up into the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the lower Great Lakes, and then the Northeast, that is where precipitation totals are expected to be in excess of a half an inch to even over an inch in some cases. A lot of this will be in the form of rain into parts of Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania especially, and that's why we could see at least some isolated flooding, especially as this comes down in a quick amount of time. In terms of snowfall totals, blended guidance is indicating that after 24-hour increments of heavy snow in parts of the west that could add up to over several inches by the time we get through Sunday morning, we will get our swath moving east. In the increment from Sunday morning to Monday morning, that's when a lot of the snow will likely get in parts of Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the UP of Michigan will fall. This guidance is indicating the blue swath having the best chance of snowfall totals in excess of three inches. Keep in mind this is blended guidance, so it's not going to be as bullish as individual models. Somewhere in that blue area, that's where there will likely be upwards of six inches of snow in some cases, especially as that colder air wraps around at the end of the system. Note that this guidance is showing some snow all the way down here into the Ohio Valley region. Even if an inch worth of snow falls at the end of this event in a place like Indiana, on top of a warm ground that's been heated up to the 60s recently and after rain will have fallen and this is probably not going to accumulate there where we could get some snow accumulation is into the interior northeast where snow will continue behind the event even coming off the lakes with several inches eventually adding up over time into the interior zones there a similar effect will be happening back into western michigan even through wednesday morning with that being said, let's use this custom graphic I've made to quickly recap the impact zones with this system from December 27th to December 30th. After some snow, some of it that could be heavy in the high elevations out west, there will be snow or a transition zone from rain to snow moving east over a lot of the northern U.S. It's worth noting that unless you're in Iowa, Wisconsin, and Michigan's parts of the transition zone or in the far interior northeast, you will probably be rain for 80% or more of the event and then very briefly technically transition you will not get much snow accumulation in the far southern part of the transition zone i can tell you that further south it will just be an all rain event with some storms even possible in parts of the south and southeast now that we've gone through the changes on the way and the storm system that will help in ushering them in let's actually take a look at how the temperatures will change and just how rapid and significant that change will be out of the weekend into next week Starting with a look at the temperature anomaly zones for the upcoming weekend around December 27th and 28th, one thing you'll note is the immense amount of yellows, oranges, and reds, particularly in the nation's midsection and towards the east. That's because overall, especially out of Saturday and into Saturday night, temperatures will be 15, 20, 25, 30 degrees above normal with the jet stream still lifting north. Look at how the shift will come into the early part of the week with that front and low pressure system moving eastward with the jet stream energy. Boom! We go from 20 and 30 degrees above average to as much as 10 to 20 to maybe even 25 degrees below average. That flip will literally just happen from the weekend into the very first couple days of the new week. Even into Tuesday, temperatures will likely be below average over much of the plains, the Mississippi Valley, over into the Appalachians region. Cooler air will continue to expand over at least a good chunk of the eastern third of the U.S., even as we go towards around New Year's Day. What will those temperature anomalies I just discussed equate to in terms of actual temperatures day by day? Let's take a look with the daily high and low temperatures projected from the National Digital Forecast Database. 
Look at how warm it is going to be on Saturday before the jet stream begins to dive down. With the jet stream moving up just like this, as I noted earlier in the video, that's where above normal temperatures by a high degree will be lifting all the way up to Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana especially, and then from points south of there. All of the boxes on your screen are where record high temperatures are expected to be met or broken. We're looking at 70s and 80s breaking records in parts of the South Central Plains on Saturday. We'll have 60s and 70s all the way up to the mid-Mississippi Valley corridor in parts of Missouri and Illinois. Into the southeast U.S., plenty of 70s and 80s will be around. And in the Georgia and Carolinas region, that could be enough to break records. Overnight Saturday night into Sunday morning, look at how warm it will be all the way up the Mississippi Valley corridor for the time being. This is going to be before the cold front really begins sliding in. All of those circles indicate record warm lows. Temperatures have never been this warm for the minimum temperature of the day since records have been kept. 50s and 60s all the way up to Peoria in Illinois and surrounding zones. That's crazy. 50 for the morning temperature in Illinois on December 28th. That's definitely record breaking there. You can see the cold loading up though behind the front negatives and single digits back into the northwestern quadrant of the country Sunday morning. Those zones will stay in the single digits in many cases into Sunday afternoon, while Sunday afternoon will still be warm further east, especially as you come into the lower Mississippi Valley corridor over to the Ohio Valley. 60s and mid to upper 70s will be forecast at highs Sunday. And then here we go. By Monday morning, you can see the cold pushing in. Lows in the teens and 20s will support that transition to snow in parts of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Lower Great Lakes region as precipitation continues. And then as we go into Monday afternoon, look at this. You can really see how the cold will have expanded. Lots of 20s and 30s for highs down to normal or below normal over much of the northern and central corridors. It will only be up and down the east coast where we'll still be hanging on to the warmer afternoon highs. Temperatures will be as high as 55 all the way up to New York City. That is well above average. With that being said, that's all I've got for you in this video. Let's go ahead and recap the headlines I just discussed, starting with headline number one. Winter is about to make a strong return. A wintry storm will help in ushering in that colder pattern as it moves back in, with some areas in line for heavy rain or heavy snow before the new year. As that jet stream energy continues flowing down, temperatures as low as 15 degrees below average will be common, leading all the way up to the start of 2026. If you want more updates on these changes as they move in, as well as other weather changes in the future, make sure you are hitting that subscribe button and turning on those notifications so that you get notified when I'm posting my videos. Again, thank you so much for tuning in to this one. I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. Make sure you're checking out that Weather Bell free trial link down below. That's a gift that you could get by getting access to the model maps, just like the ones that I use in my content. I'll put the link to Weather Bell in the description. Again, though, Merry Christmas late to everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you all. I'll see you in the next update. One Nation Weather.